to watch and discuss today. Primal Healthcare reportedly considering issuing a retail bond of about $125 million. It could be the first to benefit from the regulatory changes being pushed by the Australian Securities and Investments Commission to ease compliance hurdles. Jim Stanning is from Fixed Securities, joins me in the studio, and Carson Scott, of course, from Sky News Business, also still here. Um, Jim, morning. good morning to you. I guess people have been hoping for something that might ignite the bond market. This is still a might. They're only just considering it. But mm. is this going to make a difference? Well, look, I mean, I suppose um, it's evidence that, that some uh, potential issuers are, are looking at the new uh, uh, short-form prospectus or the, or the class order or the relief that, that ASIC provided. Um, but, uh, but I guess, you know, in, in under the, in the scheme of things, I mean, it's a fairly, a fair, been a fairly disappointing uh, uh, take-up of that, that, that documentation. I think, you know, it's, it, it's sort of evidence of a, of a drip, I suppose, rather than a torrent of interest uh, from the issuer's perspective. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it's, a, it's, it's a, I suppose, a positive development in that it may happen. Baby steps, though. Baby steps, that's right. <laughs> the only being, though, that as the bank loan market recovers, there's less justification for going down this route. I mean, it's, it's one of a suite of funding options, but, you know, you, no sooner do you see a rebound in another, then the debate shifts and the pressure to reform and streamline goes. Yeah, look, that's right. And I mean, I think that, that opportunities will, will come and go. I mean, the shape of the yield curve can dictate opportunities for corporate issuers as well. But, but look, I think, you know, t talking about the banks, there's even potential for the banks to look at this, uh, this retail issuance, uh, given that they've got a heavy reliance on deposit and offshore funding. Do you think that this idea of uh, a mock prospectus uh, should be now open up to broader consultation than just a narrow part of the industry, a sense that everyone can then understand what they should be looking out for. That was a lot of the complaint between, uh, you know, in the past. Mm. Consumers, investors who get hold of a document and they don't know what to look out for. And uh, wh why are we restricting mm. our, our talk and our, you know, our planning on this? Well, I suppose the uh, consultation paper w was issued, and I suppose the the, um, the ASIC have been, uh, you know, reluctant to be prescriptive in terms of what that document will look like, because obviously, uh, you know, risks mm. are different, or, or uh, there, every issuer has its own right. idiosyncratic issues. I think, you know, it has been widely talked about, particularly within the industry. Yeah. I think the problem is that that um, the relief doesn't exactly provide the relief that uh, that um, uh, is required. Um, for timing reasons, I just want to whip through a couple of issues as well. We could talk mm -hmm. at length about it, that, of course, sure. and we will do it another time. But um, in terms of the events happening in the US, we've looked at you know, equity market uh, reaction lately. But the Australian government bond market, how are you seeing it move around with the worries about the US economy and a double dip? Yeah, well, we're having a rally of our own here. I mean, we, we've got long-term 10-year government bond yields dropping to about 5%. Um, so it hasn't... I think that's around the low we saw in late June with the, with the weakness in the equity markets. Um, Short-term rates are very much pinned to the official cash rate, so we're seeing this flattening of the yield curve. Um, so, yeah, I mean, whilst uh, two-year rates are at half a percent in the US, they're four and a half here. Um, they're anchored to that rate. Um, whilst we have continue to see rally in long-dated long treasuries, I think our long end's going to rally as well. So it's, it's uh, very much a flattening story. Is there the same violent reaction, though, uh, in the way that there was sort of, you know, as night follows day, when, when equities in the US fall, we tend to really cue directly off that. In the mm. same way, the bond market reacted violently as if it was somehow surprised by what Bernanke said. Did you see that follow through in the domestic bond market here? Were they more tempered? Yeah, well, it is more tempered. We are seeing that in the longer dated, uh, mm. longer dated govies in sympathy with the US. It's difficult for the short end to rally here mm. because it is underpinned by that cost of funds. Right. But I think interestingly, what we've seen in the US over the last month with this big rally in equities is a bit of a, a bit of confusion, a decoupling from that sort of mm. uh, government bond, uh, you know, sort of counter countering the yep. uh, moves in the equity market. And you know, given the extent of the rally in the bond market, uh, and given this this information from Bernanke, which is you know, it's not a material thing, but it's, a, it's an indication of their concerns. I think there's an argument that the bond market's got it right. Uh, and I suppose, again, you know, with the benefit of hindsight of last night, um, that's tending to how it's, gonna, how it's playing out. And then for investors, what are the options for investors right now then? What would you suggest? Yeah, well, I, I suppose, um, you know, in the US, it's an interesting thing. I mean, half a percent is satisfying a lot of people at the moment. <laughs> so uh, in Australia, we're lucky because these yeah. short-term rates are still high. Uh, so if people are concerned about risk assets, cash and shorter dated mm -hmm. uh, low risk assets are a, a nice little haven. And particularly in this sort of run up to an election where there's added uncertainty, mm. um, you know, you can either take mad punts in the equity markets and equally lose big time. This is 
safe haven territory. You saw it in the US well, overnight. Well, it is. I mean, we continue to see this volatility in risk assets, and I think there are some fundamental things that need to shift before you start allocating out to those, to those types of assets in earnest. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting. And how competitive are the rates for deposits at the moment? I mean, we've, we've been talking about the yeah, competitiveness. Yeah. Yeah, well, well I suppose, in terms of you know, if, clients into, into cash depending on your, on your objectives and, and yeah. you know, on your outlook on equity markets, say, over the next six months to a year, I mean, you can get up upwards or in excess of 6% returns with a government guarantee. Uh, that may be more appealing to some than, than others. Jim, uh, listen, we'll have you back before the election, won't we? You will be back. I think so. I suspect <laughs> you will be. So, <laughs> okay. uh, how the bond market is also pricing in perhaps more spending commitments as well. Yeah. How that changes the whole debt and deficit equation. Look at that with you and plenty more next time. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. That's Jim Setting, Managing Director of Fixed.